question in the chat. Um, you could just say that, like, we're about to get started. Okay. Let's start my cap. Pop in here. Here's your cap. Hi, everyone. I'm Margo Atwell, the Director of Publishing here at Kickstarter. I'm really excited that you've tuned in to learn more about how to use Kickstarter to fund your poetry project. So in addition to working at Kickstarter, I'm also a creator. I've run two projects for books, uh, they're not poetry books. Uh, I'm really excited to tell you more about what I've done and what other creators have done to use Kickstarter to raise funds, but also to build community around poetry projects. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to use Kickstarter uh, and then a little bit more about Drip, which is our new ongoing funding platform. Then I'll talk about our Summer of Poetry uh, initiative, which I hope a lot of you will participate in. And then I'll have some time for questions from all of you. So Kickstarter is a platform that's oriented towards creating something to share with others. A lot of people think that that means making a book, which you absolutely can do. But you can also use it to make a chapbook, a special edition, an anthology, an event, a broadside, a tour. Uh, the sky is really the limit. Um, so anything that you make to share with others, and share with others is very broad, um, you can use Kickstarter to fund it and get a community that's excited about it. So Kickstarter is a storytelling platform, which means that you're not just selling something. You're trying to convey who you are and what you're doing, why it's important to you, to the world out there, so that people will want to pledge to your project and become a part of it. Um, your Kickstarter page should describe the context around your work, who you are, and why you're excited about the project, and also talk to backers about why they would be excited about the project, not just why you benefit from it. So when you're going to write the story of your project, think about a specific person who might be interested in it and write it to them. The personal touch and authenticity perform really well on Kickstarter. So telling your story in a way that feels authentic is much more likely to work than being a little more formal or um, kind of a robot. Like people want to see the person on the other side of the project. Um, you want to invite people in. Um, we see that sort of charity language, like donate to my project, doesn't work as well as an invitation. You know, if your project feels like not just you making a thing, but like a really exciting thing to be part of, people will be more likely to get involved. So the visuals for your project are also extremely important. The internet has become such a visual medium that it's really important to think about imagery, GIFs, videos, etc., as part of your project. The main project image is the face of your project on Kickstarter and on the internet, so you want it to be something really compelling. We see that the best images are, they don't have big text overlays, they're not too busy, they look good small, so think about what they'll look like not just at full size, but also as a thumbnail. Um, an illustration or a photograph is really great, uh, and you also want to think about how it will show up on the site. So it should be a landscape image wider than it is tall. We have more information about uh, images at a link that we can provide in the chat window. Um, so you also want your project page to have a lot of visual elements as well, so that it's not just a huge block of text that people have to read. Um, because even readers, when they're confronted with this much text on the internet, can sometimes be a little like, oh, uh, maybe I'll just save this for later. So some imagery that you might think about using, um, pictures of yourself, uh, photographs of previous books, imagery of your proposed book cover, um, maybe a picture of your workspace, uh, handwritten drafts, or maybe even a landscape that inspires you. Basically, you want to use imagery to tell the story of your project in addition to text. I also mentioned the project video. Uh, it's not a required part of a Kickstarter project, but we see that projects that have a video are more likely to succeed than those, than those that don't. You don't have to do a major Hollywood production um, or get fancy or even pay money for your video. We see that short videos, maybe two, two and a half minutes max, 
work very well on the platform because people's uh, attention span is pretty short these days. Um, you want to tell the story of your project, who you are, what you're doing, um, and why people will be excited to join you. Um, make it personal. It's really great when the creator is in the video or when there's a voiceover from the creator because then the potential backer feels like they know you and they want to be part of your project. Um, like I said, you don't need a Hollywood blockbuster type thing, um, but you do want to make sure that there's good lighting and that the sound quality is good because if they can't understand what you're saying, they won't necessarily get on board and uh, want to back your project. So another aspect of Kickstarter is project rewards. Most people aren't just giving you money out of the goodness of their heart, although some people will. But a lot of people back projects because they get a reward. Um, the reward that's most common that people are most likely to pledge to is a copy of the thing itself. So a copy of the book, um, a ticket to an event, uh, behind the scenes information from your tour, etc. Um, but I recommend that you have a variety of rewards at different price levels. We see that the most common pledge level on Kickstarter is $25, and the tier that tends to raise the most money is $100. So you want to think about having a good reward at each of those levels, and potentially a few other levels as well. Often, creators will offer specialized or limited edition rewards at higher levels, or things that are more personal, like a Skype call with the poet. You can also offer signed copies, limited broadsides, or something else that connects to your project in a really personal way. So while you're planning your project, it can feel very overwhelming to do just that. But you should also be thinking about how you're going to spread the word about your project once it's live. I recommend before, you're, before you even launch your project, make a list of everyone you know who might potentially back your project or share it with their networks. Um, you can even pre-write emails so that the day you launch your project, you're all set to go and can just hit send on those emails. The more work you do in advance, the easier your project will be once it's live. Uh, you can also pitch your project to press. Kickstarter is a really great press moment around a longer initiative because of our now or never sort of um, all or nothing funding platform, which I'll talk about a little bit. Uh, you also want to share your project on social media, not just once, but consistently throughout the project. Because of the algorithms that a lot of social media platforms are using, often people who follow you and really want to get information from you are not seeing every post. So even if you feel like you're talking about your project nonstop, it's very possible that people who care about your work won't even see it. So you want to hit a good cadence of sharing on social media and talking about it in different ways. So it's not just back my project for 30 straight days. You can also use Kickstarter Live, which is our uh, live video broadcast system that you can use uh, to stream live video directly from your project page. You can have Q&A sessions. People can chat with each other. You can see people who pledged to your project during your Kickstarter Live and uh, shout them out with a nice thank you. Um, and they can even send you a selfie, which is a three-second looping video of the people who are watching your feed. It can feel really nice uh, to have someone send a selfie so that you feel like you're talking to actual people instead of just to the internet um, or to your laptop, which is sort of what I feel like right now. Uh, another way to spread the word about your project is to do local events. If there's a bookstore, a cafe, an art gallery, or another place that's in your community that's important to you, you can do events there and talk to people about your project, even potentially do a poetry reading, and then encourage people that if they want to get a copy of the book, they can back your project. Innovative promotion that really feels like it comes from your project is really the best. Another element of Kickstarter is the backer update. Once your project is live, you have the ability to send updates to your backers that will also appear on your project page under a little tab called Updates. This is a great way to keep people posted about important campaign milestones like getting 50% or once you've reached your funding goal. It's also a great way to share more information and sneak peeks of behind the scenes things of your project. So for example, you could share a video of you reading one of the poems that you've written or um, 
or invite people in and show them uh, a scenario that inspired one of your poems. Um, backer updates are a really creative way to build community with your backers. They're also a good way to keep people posted about the project after it has funded and let them know when you'll be sending out the rewards. Um, you can also celebrate if you've won an award, if you're going to be traveling and doing events, etc. cetera. Um, those backer updates are a channel that you can build sort of uh, to make a direct connection with your backers. So I wanted to show a couple of projects that relate to poetry that have been made on Kickstarter to give you some ideas. Uh, this is Suzy Magazine. Um, it's a magazine that includes imagery, photography, and poetry. This is a tiny, cute little saddle stitched book by Aaron Watson. Um, these are poems. Uh, it's called No Experiences. And so, like you see, a Kickstarter project doesn't have to be a huge thing, it can be something tiny and beautiful like this. A couple years ago, we did a creator prompt called Make 100, where we encouraged creators to make 100 of something so that 100 backers could get involved. Um, poet Sid Orlando made this beautiful book called Sweet Rabbit Me, um, which I encourage you to check out. But again, a Kickstarter project doesn't have to be a huge, big thing of your life's work. It can be something small and personal. Uh, we've also worked with presses like Copper Canyon Press. When, uh, when the estate of Pablo Neruda discovered previously unpublished poems, they partnered with Copper Canyon Press to translate them and publish them in English. And Copper Canyon came to Kickstarter to, to raise funds to do translation and a really beautiful edition of the book, but also as a way to celebrate this momentous occasion with lovers of Neruda's poetry all over the world and they created Then Come Back, The Lost Poems of Pablo Neruda. And if you see, it's very beautiful. Um, it's got actual reproductions of some of the poems that they discovered. So if you're a fan of Neruda, I highly recommend that you check out this book. Copper Canyon also did another project called the New Poets Project, where they were looking to create a fund to publish the first books of poets. And this is one of the poets, uh, Javier Zamora, um, called Unaccompanied. I think this just came out this year, um, but it's an incredible book by a really talented poet. And I encourage you to check out this one too. People have also funded broadsides, poetry events, anthologies, and more. So it's really a very open platform that you can do a lot of different things on. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about why you would use Kickstarter specifically. Kickstarter is a public benefit corporation, which means that we are a mission-driven company oriented towards helping to bring creative projects to life couple stats that I wanted to share with you. In the publishing category, over the past nine years since we started in 2009, over 12,700 publishing projects have been brought to life on Kickstarter. Last year, in 2017, 1,893 projects were funded, just in 2017. The publishing category has raised over $120 million since Kickstarter launched and that represents a community of 1.6 million backers and counting. 32,000 of those backers have backed at least one poetry project. To put Kickstarter publishing in context, um, the NEA has distributed $119 million in funding to literature since 1966. And in 2017, Simon & Schuster published around 2,000 titles worldwide. So I mentioned earlier that Kickstarter is an all or nothing platform. And what that means is you set a goal, so an amount of money you're looking to raise, and a timeline, so how long your project is going to go for. Typically projects go for about 30 days, although you can make it anywhere from one day to 60 days. If you raise the amount of 
money that you've set as your goal in that time allotted, then all of your backers' cards are charged. You get the money, and then you distribute the rewards to your backers after you've made them. If you don't hit that goal, no problem. Nobody's card is charged. No money changes hands. Um, and you can go away and really think about what happened with the project and potentially come back and relaunch. One of our creators, Spike Trotman of Iron Circus, says a failed Kickstarter campaign is a dodged bullet. What she means by that is if you don't use Kickstarter to see if there's an audience for what you're doing, you just go ahead and print a thousand copies of your poetry book. If you don't have a really solid way to get those thousand copies into the hands of readers, you can just have a lot of copies of your book in your garage or your attic or your closet for the rest of your life. But with Kickstarter, you have the ability to test an idea, see if it resonates with an audience, and if the first time doesn't work out, then you can go back and retool it and figure out, okay, maybe I didn't spread the word enough. And then you can plan it again, relaunch it, and we've, also, we've often seen creators have success with their second project. That said, all or nothing seems pretty scary, but we see that in the publishing category, if you launch your project and you have 25 or more backers, there's an 80% chance you'll reach or exceed your goal. So there's a very, very strong possibility that your publishing project will go on to succeed. So I mentioned that I would talk a little bit more about DRIP, and then I'm going to talk about our summer of poetry. So DRIP is our new ongoing funding platform. It's connected to Kickstarter. So if you're a DRIP, I'm sorry, a Kickstarter creator or backer, you can use your Kickstarter login to log into DRIP. It's a way for artists and writers and other creative people to get support in an ongoing way for their creative practice and for people who enjoy your work to subscribe and give you money on a regular basis and also engage with that work. Right now we're in a, uh, an invitation only public beta period, but I'm really excited about when we'll open it up to the wider world. We're already seeing creators raising hundreds of dollars and even thousands of dollars sometimes from their communities via DRIP. So Kickstarter's Summer of Poetry is something that we're trying this year. Um, obviously, I'm a huge fan of poetry, and I wanted to use Kickstarter as a way to help people raise funds for cool poetry projects and also connect with poetry readers and appreciators worldwide. So from June to August this year, we'll be celebrating live poetry projects. We'll be scheduling poetry readings via Kickstarter Live every Friday all summer long, assuming we have enough takers. Um, we'll be doing an event at Kickstarter headquarters. Um, and we also want to spark conversations about poetry, both reading and writing. So we're really hoping that all of you help to inform us about what you want the Kickstarter Summer of Poetry to be. If you're interested in participating, I hope you'll email poetry at kickstarter.com and we'll put that in the, in the links section. So I wanted to go over just a few more uh, tools and platform features and then open this up to questions from all of you. So when you run a Kickstarter project, one of our tools that you have access to is the creator dashboard. That lets you see how people are finding your project, how many pledges are coming from different channels and how much money is coming from those channels, um, how many people are pledging to different rewards, what your momentum looks like, etc. This lets you have more information so that you can make better choices about how to promote your project, how to talk to the community, etc. We even have a tool called custom referral tags so you can create links and see how many pledges and how much money comes from a specific link. That way you can test out different imagery, different ways of talking about your project, pitching to different communities, and really learn more about who's excited about your project and why. Kickstarter Live is also a really powerful tool for connecting to an audience. I'm very excited to see what poets will be able to do with that this summer. I think that poetry on video and audio is extremely powerful. So, 
I hope that a lot of you will think about scheduling Kickstarter live poetry readings with us. Um, as a public benefit corporation, we really try to be very creator friendly. So for example, you own your data and you have access to reach out to your backers, not just while your project is live or while you're fulfilling your project, but forever. Those are relationships that you're creating that you can carry forward throughout your career. We have a lot of resources on Kickstarter to talk about how to launch, plan, promote, and fulfill your projects. So we'll be sharing some more links to those as well. Um, and we'll be, we'll be sharing some of those links in our Summer of Poetry page. But now I'm going to open up to some questions. Just gonna look over here. Fantastic. All right, uh, so we have a question from James McBennett. Thanks, James. Curious about what you think the smallest and largest reward should be and total rewards. Max Tenken, Cards Against Humanity and Secret Hitler is against $1 rewards, $1,000 rewards, and 30 reward categories. There are a lot of different philosophies about rewards and I understand why Max Temkin thinks that way. Um, I believe he wants the, the emphasis to remain on the project you're creating. Um, Max Temkin creates board games. Um, he's also created a zine and some other things as well. I'm actually a fan of the $1 reward, especially in literature. A lot of us who work in literary fields don't make a ton of money, but we still like to engage with our favorite writers online. Um, and someone who pledges a dollar today because maybe they're a student, maybe they don't have a ton of money to spare, maybe they like your work but aren't incredibly familiar with it, um, maybe a year from now or three years from now, they'll have become much more familiar with you and they'll buy your book if they get a backer update from you. Uh, so I'm a big fan of the sort of big tent philosophy of Kickstarter project rewards. Um, I do agree that you don't wanna have just an unlimited range of rewards. I think it can get confusing, but I think that it's really great to have a couple of rewards at lower levels so that people who don't have you know, boundless funds can participate in a way that feels meaningful to them. I really like to see a copy of the book if you're making a book um, or if you have a book out. Uh, and I do think that you can make a really special reward if that feels useful to you. Um, for example, a hardcover or special edition, uh, a broadside, a Skype call with the poet or more. That said, I've seen projects be successful with just a single reward. And my other philosophy is don't ruin your own life. So. If you don't want to make a t-shirt, if you don't want to deal with sizes and printing a t-shirt and having an entire other project, don't make a t-shirt. You can absolutely be successful without it. I'm going to ask, uh, see if anyone has any other questions. Page through this book a little bit more also mm -hmm. because it's a very cool book. Well, if there aren't any more questions, then I really encourage you to check out Kickstarter Summer of Poetry. Uh, email us at poetry at kickstarter.com. And I hope that a lot of you will think about launching projects and, um, and supporting projects that do get launched. Oh, a couple more questions, thank you. Is it okay to have a free reward category? Um, I don't think, uh, I'm not sure I completely understand, but in order to pledge to a Kickstarter project, people have to pledge at least $1. So there's not, um, there's not really an option to have a free reward. But that said, I've seen people run projects where they make something and then share it for free with the world after that. Um, Kickstarter is a really pretty flexible tool, so you can do what you want with it. And we don't have a really firm belief that you have to ask people for money in exchange for things. That is kind of how the, the platform works. 
Um, oh, uh, James also asked, is it okay to have a link to a free reward? Absolutely. Um, we want you to be able to share your work in whatever ways you want and whatever ways your audience is excited about. So you can definitely do that. Um, what if you're not sure how to do a print edition? Is a digital only reward okay or is it too simple? Thanks for that question, Naomi. Um, you definitely don't have to do a print reward if you don't want one. Um, we do see that often people like to pledge to print rewards, but if you don't want to make one or that seems too complicated, you can absolutely do digital only rewards. Uh, the fulfillment is much more simple on those. That said, we do have a link to creator resources. So we recommend some printers and other organizations that can help you with a print edition if that is something you want to pursue. Uh, we have another question from Brontide. Is Kickstarter best for works in progress that are nearly complete? Or could you start a successful cam uh, Kickstarter campaign if your manuscript was still in its infancy? We do see that projects that are launched where the project is closer to being complete are often more successful. Because people are pledging money for something that doesn't exist yet, it's really helpful if you can give them confidence that what you're making is going to exist and also let them know that they're going to enjoy what you're making. If you're a writer or an artist who has done a lot of projects in the past and you have an audience that's excited about your next thing and willing to be along for the journey, even if that journey is a little longer, then absolutely you can launch a project for something that's a little more nascent. But I see that the most successful projects typically are coming to Kickstarter around the time that they start needing the money. And it can be very stressful as a creator if you launch a project and get the funds but you have a very long road ahead of you in terms of making the thing. So it's really up to your tolerance for risk, what your community is excited about, um, and what people are willing to pledge money to. So I'm gonna leave it one more minute in case anyone else has any questions, but these have been some really excellent ones. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you'll check out our Summer of Poetry and our live projects uh, on Kickstarter's poetry uh, section as well. Thanks so much.